I've been holding on to this for way too long. I think it's finally time to just take the Instax Mini Evo for a spin. Let's go. All right, to start off this journey, we have to head to Best Buy because we needed some film. Well, we don't actually need the film. The interesting part about the Instax Mini Evo is that it's actually a digital camera, so you can use it with a micro SD card and use it just like a digital camera, but let's find some film because film is a little more fun. When I got to Best Buy, it was actually sold out, which just goes to show how popular these cameras are, except for the square ones, apparently. Anyway, I was able to get one pack of rainbow film left, which was pretty awesome, and then let's head outside and take some photos. These are just the normal settings and uh, this photo is me taking something into the sun just to test the contrast and there you go. But overall, it's a really fun camera. So stick around and let's see what else we can do with this bad boy. I have a bunch of missed calls from Joey and I'm about to visit him and I'm hoping he's not at the grocery store already. This is Joey, he's actually been in the behind the scenes of a few videos so far. Here he is in a photo inside his apartment. A little grainy from the Instax, but kind of moody, I guess that's fun. Anyway, he said he'd maybe pass this night if I went to the grocery store with him, so we're gonna do that and I'm gonna take some photos along the way. I forgot to mention while we're here, we're putting new handlebar tape on Joey's bike and then we're heading right back out for pictures with this guy. Photo location number one, it's a Loblaws, we're getting spinach. I probably should have filmed a little more inside of this lava laws, but here's some photos for you guys from the Instax. Probably turned out better than I would have expected inside of a weirdly lit building. Overall, outside in good daylight, the camera holds up really well, actually. We've taken a lot of photos inside of Joey's apartment and under an artificial lighting, it's not as good. And uh, yeah, that's about the test from there. I pieced out, went to test out some outdoor shots at night, some low light. I don't know, they're a little rough with the flash, it's a little better, but honestly, your phone is gonna be taking way better low light photos than the Instax. Unless you kind of want that low quality filmic grain, which is what this will give you, I guess. Anyway, I'm gonna head home and I will check back in with you guys tomorrow morning. Last night was fun, but now we need to talk about some of the real aspects of the camera, some of the pros and some of the cons. All right, I'm gonna try to get through this as concisely as possible, but basically, I love the design of this camera. It's stunning, I mean, it looks awesome, it's super fun to use. People are like curious about it. It's one of the few cameras that my friends are actually into, you know. I'll, I'll walk over there with my regular Fuji X-Series cameras, different lenses, big lenses, small lenses, vlogging cameras, and the one that gets played with the most amongst all of my friends, all my peers, I guess, is the Instax because it's so approachable. Just to cap that off, I'll say that I really like the retro styling of it. I think that's really cool. I like all the buttons and dials, even if they just change a few things. This top dial just changes your film effect, so you got like different colored films, different, basically think of them as like filters that change the colors or the contrast of the photos. But the photos it takes are about as good as a cell phone from two or three years ago, so not necessarily bad, but not necessarily great either. On the front dial here, like a regular camera's focus ring, is what changes the lens effect. So you can do like half frame, mirror one side to the other. There's a fisheye effect that I use a ton of. Uh, what else is in here? There's like a light leak one. Basically, there's 10 lens effects, 10 film colors. Fuji says there's 100 different combinations. To be honest, I find myself leaning on the retro, the blue, and the heavy contrast and vivid ones more than any of the others. But depending on the situation, I could get some cool shots. I think I've used the orange one once and enjoyed it. Not as much of the lens effects, but that's just the way that I shoot. Most people, I think, will get a lot out of it because this is kind of like a fun party camera and that's where those thrive.
Unfortunately, now we have to talk about the things that I didn't like as much about the camera. And don't get me wrong, it's still a super fun little camera, but there are some things that could be improved upon. First up, it uses micro USB to charge. What year is this? Moving on. There's no viewfinder, and with this like vintage inspired design and this fake sort of selfie mirror viewfinder, if you've used Instax cameras before, you're familiar with this, but on this camera for the price of it, which we're about to get into, a viewfinder would have been really nice. I feel like every time I picked it up, and every time a lot of my friends picked it up as well, everybody just naturally wanted to hold it up to their eye like a real camera. But instead, you're using the digital screen on the back. And there's actually an app for this one, so you can take photos and send them from the camera to your phone so you can just share them. Oh wait, you can't. You can only do that if you've printed off the photo before, which means it's gonna cost you about a buck to actually send that photo to your phone the easy way. You can take the, if you're using, well, there's some inbound storage in here, I'll put some up here how much, but if you take the uh, micro SD card, which you can put in here and move it over to a computer or a phone, you can take the photos off manually that way, but there is an easy way through an app, it's just gonna cost you a dollar because you have to print every photo that you wanna transfer as well, which is really annoying because as much as this is fun as a film camera, for the price of it, it's kind of like, hey, why not make it as versatile as a digital camera as possible? Real people are gonna be using this every day and they might not always have film on them. So that's a bit annoying. Okay, now we'll get into the price, which is 250 Canadian, and that is a lot of money. Basically, you could get a regular Instax Mini and a regular Instax printer, and you could just have it all as two for less money than this costs as one. I'm not gonna lie and say that I don't love this because it looks cool and the convenience of having a printer, a digital camera, and an Instax all in one little device is super fun, but you're gonna have to know if that's a device for you. For me, I'm more of a photography nerd, so as much as I love this little camera and I love having it in my collection, I only bring it out once in a while when I'm going to party with friends, when I do my main shooting and I'm actually out you know, having fun for the focus of photography. I'm using my X-Series camera, I'm using a phone, or I'm using a real film camera, even a real point and shoot film camera can be more fun, cost less, and the photos end up looking a little better, which I guess is the final pro, or the final con that I should mention. I mean, I think I mentioned this on the pro side too, but the photos are not as good as my iPhone 13. They're not as good as the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra, or S22 Ultra, what year is this? And they're not as good as the OnePlus 10 Pro. You know, it's, it's a really small digital camera sensor, so you're not getting a lot of performance out of this for that cost. And, you know, I would have even taken $300 with a much, much better lens and not having to pay to transfer my photos from the device to my phone. Like, that's just whack. All right, and that's basically it. I'm just gonna wrap this up by saying, overall, I am a big fan of the Instax Mini Evo. This is a really fun camera. If you have one, I think you're gonna love it. If you're a hardcore photographer, I'm not sure if it's right for you, but if you just want something for a little bit of fun on the weekends and something that I think your friends are gonna enjoy and you're gonna enjoy and you're gonna get some fun memories out of and you're gonna actually print photos from, it's this thing and it's awesome. So I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.